class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we'll be discussing another Sharks player review. And next up, we've got Sharks defenseman Matt Benning. In my previous player review, I talked about Mark Edvard Vlasic, a player who has been with the organization for many, many years, and yet came in with all-time low expectations of being like a sixth or even seventh defenseman for the San Jose Sharks, and ended up outperforming them quite well. For Matt Benning's case, he falls into an extremely similar bucket where the only difference really being that he was not on the San Jose Sharks for over a decade's time and instead was just signed this past offseason by Mike Greer. And interestingly enough, both Benning and Vlasic ended up being a pairing for the Sharks for the vast majority of this season. So again, like I said, Benning coming in with the expectations of being that sixth or seventh defenseman and the contract value that he would sign in free agency of last offseason would indicate that very same thing, signing at $1.25 million cap hit, that is $1.25 million per year. But the very interesting and kind of controversial thing about Matt Benning's contract is not the dollar value that he is getting paid per season, but instead how many seasons he's getting paid that money. The thing is, is that when it comes to these fourth line players, 13th forward type of guys, or on the defensive side of things, a sixth or seventh defenseman kind of guy, they usually get signed for like a year, maybe two years. And this is because at that type of level, which is that bottom six or that bottom pairing, you're kind of a replaceable player. So unless you are really established and really excel in the role that you serve, for instance, let's take a look at Barclay Goodrow from a few years ago with the San Jose Sharks. When he was on that roster, he was a bottom six player, but he excelled so much in that role that it wouldn't be the end of the world to give him like a three or four year deal. But most of the time, you end up being a relatively replaceable player where you may very well play 30, 40, 50 games with the team in the, on the fourth line one season, and then the next year not even play a single game with them. Take a look at, you know, Yona Gadjevic. He might not even be back with the San Jose Sharks, and yet he played a good chunk of games this season. Take a look at Scott Reedy, who played over 30 games with the Sharks, uh, back in the 21-22 season and yet played not a single one this past year in 22-23. It's kind of fleeting moments and you kind of have to play every game like it may very well be your last because you could come out of the lineup at any point. And so you sign these shorter term contracts so that you're not left with a fourth liner on your roster who you don't think is actually good enough to play more games with you. And so when it came to Benning, he didn't get signed for a one or two year deal. There's actually a decent comparable this offseason with the San Jose Sharks as well because they also signed Marcus Nudivara to a deal, not necessarily saying that he's also supposed to have been a bottom pairing seventh defenseman, but he signed it for one year at $1.5 million. And yet for whatever reason, Matt Benning ends up getting a four-year deal at that $1.25 million cap it. So there was a very real possibility that this deal would end up looking decently ugly for the Sharks. It's not as though $1.25 million necessarily burns a hole in anybody's pocket, but it's the type of deal that if this ends up being like a seventh defenseman and you come into this season and like Henry Thrun outperforms him and Shakir Mukhamadoulin outperforms him, so he ends up being like a minor leaguer or like a seventh defenseman, like I said, that $1.25 million that you're then paying for the next three seasons as well is not a great look. And yet, maybe Mike Greer saw something that I didn't, that most people did not. Maybe Mike Greer is a genius, or maybe he just got slightly lucky. But Matt Benning ended up being more than a serviceable defenseman for the San Jose Sharks and actually made up a half-decent top for defensemen and ended up also being one of the more efficient contracts that the San Jose Sharks do have. That's not saying much because many of the Sharks contracts are not particularly great, but still $1.25 million for a serviceable top four defenseman is extremely solid value. And so if we take a look at the games this season, he played 77, that is almost the full year, one goal for and 23 assists for 24 points. That is actually second on the team in terms of defensive scoring. I'm not going to necessarily like make up any sort of things that Matt Benning was actually remotely good offensively, but you know, he's on the ice, and at the very least, it shows that he was playing in the offensive zone a decent amount to be able to get those 24 points, so there is that. On the plus-minus side, obviously, minus 17, like it was the case with Mark Edvard Vlasic, is not super appetizing to look at on the surface, but when you take a look at a deeper uh, sort of examination of it, 
like I mentioned in that Vlasic video, Vlasic bending was the pairing that the Sharks had to usually try and shut down the other team's top comp uh, competition. And so you're going to end up being on for a lot of goals against when you're shutting down the other team's competition and you're on a bad team as well. So when you're playing against the McKinnons and the McDavid's and the, all of these types of players, you're going to give up goals for sure, for sure. Now, the big reason for why Matt Benning actually found himself below the sort of standings here in terms of ratings compared to Mark Edward Vlasic is not necessarily because that I don't like Benning as much as I do Vlasic, more so that Vlasic felt like more of a consistent player over this past season, where there were obviously games where Vlasic stood out in a bad light, but it was kind of few and far between. While Benning did have majority solid games this season, there were also a pretty large handful of games where Benning looked exceedingly bad and was making some very, very bad plays. You see, when Vlasic looked not so great in particular games, it was more so positionally. While Benning not looking good, it was like sort of egregious types of mistakes that lead directly to goals against. And this happened particularly early on in the season for sure, but also many times at points during the season as well. And so I decided to actually have him ranked just a bit below Mark Edward Vlasic. In terms of time on ice, he did play a lot more than Vlasic did this season, a good two minutes more with 19 minutes and 47 seconds. That is not second on the team in terms of time on ice for defensemen because Mario Ferraro does win win out in that regard, though that is a player who I will get to much later on in my reviews. It does go to show, though, that Benning, as a player who was playing in a sort of top four type of role, he gets almost 20 minutes of ice time, and this is considering that he doesn't really get too much power play ice time. They did try him in that role a few times, but very clearly didn't really work out in that second power play type of situation, and so there really wasn't much of it, but it did happen every once in a while, but it just goes to show that that's not necessarily inflating his time on ice here, and much of this was at either even strength or shorthanded. He did play a good chunk of shorthanded time, and a reminder that the Sharks' penalty killing was quite good this season. And so when it comes to a grade, obviously there is no grade from last season. He was not with the San Jose Sharks this past year. But when it comes to this season, considering expectations were indeed rather low, not just from fans like myself, but also from the organization, even though they did give him the longer contract, it is still worth $1.25 million, which absolutely screams sixth or seventh defenseman. The fact that he comes in and does a half decent job as a top four guy filling in that particular role because the Sharks do not have a strong defensive core, I give him the grade of a B. Class dismissed.